Happy New Year! I hope you all had an amazing holiday, but now it's time to head into 2025. This year is going to be absolutely packed with incredible space missions and astronomical events. So let's start! Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Liu and in this week's video let's talk about space in 2025. January is going to be busy with Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket's maiden flight. This beast of a launch vehicle is designed to carry both people and payloads to orbit. Now, remember iSpace, the company that made history with the first privately led attempt to land on the moon? Well, they're back again with Hakuto R Mission 2, and this time they're aiming for a smoother landing. After their Mission 1 lander unfortunately crashed in April 2023, the team has been hard at work analyzing all of that data and making improvements so that Mission 2, which is carrying the Resilience Lunar Lander, Tenacious, a micro rover, and in partnership with UNESCO, a memory disk containing 275 languages and other cultural artifacts will be able to land on the moon. This mission will fly on a SpaceX Falcon 9 with Firefly's first ever Blue Ghost lunar lander and if successful these lunar landers will be able to deliver small payloads to the surface of the moon. And actually throughout 2025 we'll see a lot of action on the moon with the likes of Astrobotics Griffin Lander and Intuitive Machines second and third attempts after they supposedly became the first commercial company to soft land on the moon even though it landed on its side. In February, NASA is launching a mission that's going to create a 3D map of the universe in near-infrared light called SphereX. And this is of course an acronym which stands for Spectrophotometer for the History of the Universe, Epoch of Reionization, and ISIS Explorer. SphereX will study the cosmic inflation period, a rapid expansion that occurred fractions of a second after the Big Bang, it aims to map fluctuations in the distribution of galaxies to learn about the mechanisms behind inflation. In March, Roscosmos will launch Bion M number two. It's a six month mission to observe the effects of the Van Allen radiation belts on mice. Now, these belts aren't exactly a vacation spot. They're these intense zones of radiation that surround the Earth, filled with charged particles from the sun that get trapped by our Earth's magnetic field. The radiation can be pretty harmful for living things and this is why astronauts usually try to avoid spending too much time in these zones. But these mice are on a special mission and they're prepared to help us understand how prolonged exposure to this radiation affects living organisms. Now this is a follow-up mission on Bion M number one that looked at the fundamental mechanisms of how life adapts to microgravity and then readapts to Earth's normal gravity by sending biological payloads, including rodents, fish and insects, into space. In May, CNSA will launch TM12. This mission plans to make an asteroid sample return from the near Earth asteroid 469219 Kamaloa. If successful, which we won't know until 2027, it will make China the third country to have successfully returned a sample from an asteroid. And this will be using a completely different method to NASA's OSIRIS REx and JAXA's Hayabusa missions, which all use touch and go. Essentially, they bounce off the asteroids, whereas CNSA will attempt to anchor and attach to the asteroid. The Rubin Observatory's LSST will use its 8.4 meter telescope and 3.2 gigapixel camera, the largest ever built for astronomy, to create this dynamic multicolor catalog of over 37 billion stars and galaxies over a 10 year survey period. And it will start in 2025, probably in June. Hopefully they're going to reveal the mysteries of dark energy, track billions of solar system objects and capture transient phenomena phenomena like supernova and gamma ray bursts. By generating 500 petabytes of data, Vera Rubin will provide a time-lapse view of the universe, reshaping our understanding of the cosmos. The stranded astronauts Sunny Williams and Butch Wilmore, who have been stuck on the ISS since June last year, won't be back until March earliest, but in the meantime, the Boeing Starliner 1 and the SpaceX Crew 11 are 
double booked to fly to the ISS in August. Only one of these missions will fly in this time slot though. But I would be very wary of the Boeing after the last incident, even if this one is the official flight and the previous one, which carried Sunny and Butch, was just a test. And then lastly, there are going to be tons more of maiden flight rocket launches, like ISA Aerospace's Spectrum rocket blasting off from Andoya Space Center in Norway. This European launch vehicle is designed to deliver small satellites into orbit, and its first flight is already booked solid with payloads from five different customers. This marks a significant step for Europe's private space flight sector. We'll have maiden flights from Phantom Space's Daytona launch vehicle. And over in India, Skyroot Aerospace's Vikram 1 is showcasing the rise of private space enterprises in India. Of course, we're still awaiting on Vulcan Centaur. This heavy lift launch vehicle from United Launch Alliance has been facing some delays, but hopefully, fingers crossed, 2025 will be the year it finally takes to the skies. And if it does, it will deliver powerful capabilities for both commercial and governmental mission. And on a more geopolitical note, Iran is planning their first ever launch from the Shabaha space base. This new facility gives them increased flexibility and capability for launching satellites. And it'll be interesting to see how this development unfolds on the international stage. But in the meanwhile, here in the UK, another launch platform, the Spaceport in Sutherland, has been shelved. What are we doing, UK? Everyone is moving forward. We're moving back. Anyway, that's all I have time for this week. Let me know what you're most looking forward to in the year to come. Thank you to my YouTube Perks members for supporting this video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.